Okay, this is my second attempt, and let's hope that this works a little better. This is just the faux ivory, my way. Um, you're welcome to modify things as you like. Some artists prefer to do it very uh, evenly, like this. But then, sometimes it's nice to work a piece quite unevenly. So, it's just a matter of uh, how you slap it together and how you trim it, and I'll show you how I do it. My formula for ivory is, as you can see, half a part of cadmium yellow. I'm working with Primo. And half a um, piece of burnt umber. And then 21 pieces of white. So that would be a ratio of one cadmium yellow, one burnt umber, to 42 white. So this is the ivory that I get if you prefer a lighter or darker ivory, just adjust your colors accordingly. Then I do a piece of translucent that's approximately the same width, and I make it approximately the same length. I'm not going to worry about being too exact. Then it's simply a matter of putting one on top of the other. I'm going to roll it through the pasta machine on the thickest set. So now I've got a piece like this and I'm going to cut it into relatively even pieces. Let's see, I'll do like that. And the nice thing about doing it this way is you don't have to worry about how accurately you're putting it together. When I put them on, I just slightly stagger them so they're slightly offset. And this one might offset it again like that. Okay, maybe I'll offset it a little more. And then I'll do it this way again. And whatever. Okay, so now I've got a sandwich. And I don't worry about edges or anything. I find that when I do it this way, I get the best possible outcome for a very random, full, fossilized bone. I'm just kind of turning it into a square. Okay, now those are quite thick, those stripes. You see these stripes are thinner. Okay. So basically now it's just a matter of this plastic sheet is moving so it makes it a little more difficult for me to roll it out. I'm going to roll it out a bit lengthwise and probably cut and stack it one more time. on it. It really doesn't matter. It just gets very interesting. And uh, you can see they're still fairly thick relative to the other ones. So I'm going to flip them now so that I get the translucent up here is now down here and uh, that's going to give me some more randomness. So I'm going to roll it out one more time. You're going to get some movement on the edges since the edges were not totally flat. I'm going to cut and stack it one more time. And at this stage, some artists prefer to even up the edges, but I don't. I kind of like what I get when I do this. And I've got a very fine stripe on this one. This one is quite fine. So it'll be interesting. I can compress it a little bit if I don't want it to be that long. And I'm going to continue to shape it again. <laughs> Being very scientific here. And this will give me a really nice random pattern. Not super 
pretty, but very interesting. Okay, just gently even it out. <laughs> So now I'm going to trim off a piece and see how this looks. If you cut this way, you're moving a lot of clay at once, but if you cut sort of like a... on an angle like this, as though you have a fulcrum and you move it down, you're moving through less distance. And here is our ivory, although it's very close now to this, but nice and random. And you see you can mess up the patterning just by throwing in some translucent into the middle. But this gives you some really nice ends that you can overlap. So I'll do some cutting and uh, wrapping of things next so that you can see what they're going to look like.